Hello and welcome to GeForce GTX 770 uh, overclocking tutorial for total beginner. My name is Alex Moroz and I'm going to be your tutor during this video tutorial. During this video tutorial you will learn how to pretty much overclock the GeForce GTX 770. Uh, you will learn how to overclock it through the software. There is two methods how to you can overclock your video card. You can overclock your video card through the software or you can overclock your video card through the hardware physically uh, basically modifying some components on a video card. We're not going to talk about the hardware overclocking because I'm not consider this a safe uh, overclocking tutorial for a beginner. We're going to talk about the software overclocking which I consider completely safe. But keep in mind you're doing it on your own risk and expenses. Let's go ahead and talk about the overclocking. And before we're going to talk about it, there is some requirements I put it down for you. Of course, any brand GeForce GTX 770 is required. It could be 2 GB or 4 GB version. In this case, I'm using the EVGA GTX 770 2 GB Superclock Edition. Of course, I suggest you to have at least power supply, which is 550 watt, which is at least bronze certified, uh, has the bronze certification on it. Gold is even better or even better like 600 700 watt will be even better this is for a single video card if you have in crossfire at least a 750 watt power supply which has at least bronze certification but gold is again is better than the bronze one of course uh, there is some software is required because we're going to overclock it through the software uh, just go ahead and google for EVGA Precision X software which is freeware uh, and if you're using the EVGA as I'm using it today you will have it on your driver uh, DVD MSI Afterburner software is also freeware and we are going to use it and need it. Go ahead and Google for it. GPUZ software as well as freeware and we are going to use it as well to get our statistics and make sure that we are overclocking our video card and we can see some spe specifications of the bandwidth and uh, pixel fill rate is increasing as well. And we need that software to see that third party software to see the changes. And of course, I suggest you to have a few games to test your overclocking for stability and also 3D Mark or Unigen have on benchmark to see the score when it's going to increase. And if the score will be increased, then you're in the right way. And if the score is going to decrease by a couple of FPS, then your overclock is unstable and you need to decrease your frequencies. And how to do it, we will learn in a few minutes. Let's learn the basic components information on the video card and learn why we need to apply some frequencies and where the physical uh, locations of those components on the video card. As you can see, I just removed the heatsink on the video card and this is just plain PCB. So pretty much that cover uh, consider inside of the heatsink and when you're removing that heatsink, you have the PCB. And right here, that square thing, the biggest chip is going to be the GPU graphic processor unit. And this graphic processor unit pretty much is responsible for the calculations of the pixels and vertices and etc. And animation and 3D models during our games and other 2D graphics. So this is the, the brain of the video card. And when I'm saying GPU clock will be increased or decreased, I'm talking about to applying some frequencies on this squarish chip, the biggest chip on a video card, in the middle of the video card. I can say GPU clock or core clock, it depends to the software that I'm using. And uh, this little uh, squarish um, um, chips right here called the video memory. And uh, in our case, on the GTX 770, it's going to be GDDR5 type of the video memory. And when I'm going to say I'm increasing some clock on the memory I'm, or video memory, I'm going to reference to those. So you will know we are going to increase to those. And what those does, pretty much they're storing some textures, some information, which calculated by the GPU inside of them uh, instead of on your RAM in, in on your system. So it's easier and faster access because it's GDDR5 and it's probably in your uh, computer right now if you're watching this video in 2014 you have the ddr3 memory and gddr5 has faster access rate and it's also um, rotated close uh, it's also location 
uh, of all those GDDR5 video memory is closest to the GPU so it doesn't need to travel through the PCB through the motherboard to the RAM and come back it's just going to travel to that short distance so it's completely makes sense right folks uh, the memory is dedicated just for the calculations of the GPU information and to be stored on that memory and then call back at any time on GPU and so it's for faster loading time all right enough of theories and let's see some actions and learn how to overclock GTX 770 right folks well you asked for it all right folks and I just assumed that you installed the MSI afterburner attack power GPU Z tool and EVGA precision X just like I asked you in requirements and softwares that required for this project let's go ahead and run GPU Z it's a software where we can learn some information about our GPU some name of it some revisions we can save the bias and then we can see the shaders um, all kind of information set of pixel fill rate is nice to have it's going to change during the overclock textual fill rate if you have the newer version of the GPU Z bandwidth will also change when we will increase when we will record our overclock our GDDR5 which is memory and texture fill rate will be seen when you will have newer version than I do all right so bandwidth will be changes again and pixel fill rate will be changed so those for values that you're looking for when we're going to overclock on the GPU Z as well as GPU, GPU clock memory and boost clock those values are going to change as well so this is why we need the GPU Z to confirm that our overclocking uh, settings are changing when we're increasing some values on them uh, checking some third party tools which is GPU Z let's go ahead and run the EVGA precision X and start working with some values over here so pretty much when you overclock and the first thing what you want to do um, as you can see some values over here you can adjust those values so and it's version 4.2 so when you overclock and the first thing what you want to do you want to increase your power target and temp target all the way up this is what I'm going to do over here so it's 106% on a, a superclock GTX uh, 770 by EVGA 95 Celsius degrees and um, on our max temperature before it's going to lower the clock and memory settings uh, frequencies and then you're going to start to overclock your GPU clock by setting some values the save values will be plus 40 megahertz on a GPU and start with that and you will see in the GPU Z that values are changed and um, on the left screen let's go ahead and run the MSI afterburner and in MSI afterburner you can test the applied values every time you're applying some values on GPU or memory you can pretty much test it by pressing on this K icon which is combustor and it will run the some ben uh, benchmark testing utility and over here on the right you can see the values of our GTX 770 uh, voltage and etc temperature on the left and the load since I'm recording this video it's not going to show the load but if this application will be freeze up then means that our clock is unstable let's go ahead and increase some more values keep in mind that combustor you need to run combustor about 30 minutes 10, 10 megahertz steps when you are clocking the GPU clock or core clock that's that's the values that you want to pursue by 10 megahertz steps and then test it about 30 minutes in combustor and check your uh, temperature and values over here on the right in MSI after burner just in case and test it with combustor about 20 minutes and also run your favorite games and I suggest you to run the 3D Mark benchmark as well to see the improvements in a score okay so if it's stable uh, we're going to move on as you can see our GPU clock is increased right here in the GPU Z and memory clock is didn't increase yet but will be increased when we're going to increase some frequencies on the memory okay so and boost core is increased as well because it's a boost function for the GPU and you can see increased by 50 megahertz okay it's stable let's go ahead and apply uh, 60 which is 10 uh, step 10 megahertz step and test the 60 by pressing on combustor and test it 
for about 30 minutes as again and then play your favorite games at least two different games for 30 minutes and check it also 3d mark or unigine heaven is great benchmarks to see the value and if the value is increased you're on the right way if it's not increased and you dramatically lost couple fps then overclocking is unstable and you want to back up by 10 megahertz and test it again and if it will be stable then this is your maximum uh, stable gpu frequency so first you're looking to find out the gpu maximum frequency and when you're going to find out GPU maximum frequency, then we're going to move to memory and overclocking the memory. But starting with GPU, why you want to overclock the GPU first and find the maximum frequency? Just because it's going to give us, it's, it's better to troubleshoot. Okay, I know the 60 is fine. As you can see, boost on 60 on GPU clock and boost in the GPU Z. As again, let's double test it. You want to test every single frequency applied to make sure it's stable and after this point I will just go ahead and move on a little bit more and apply 10 megahertz more and uh, on GPU and 70 megahertz and I know my uh, video card is about 70 megahertz as a maximum value from some people will be just um, 83 maybe uh, maximum or 80 maximum for some will be 60 maximum keep in mind that GPU frequency is not going to be as the same uh, for you as you see on my screen you need to test your maximum st stable frequencies on GPU and memory as well because every single die on the silicon comes with its own unique values and here we go folks so I'm going to test it if it's stable then I will call it stable if it's not stable then I will back up by 10 megahertz uh, decrease. I know 70 megahertz is my maximum. For some people, maybe 100 will be just maximum, you know. For some, 120. It depends, as again, on my video card, 70 was the max. So, as I know, 70 is the max. I will apply that volume. And because um, I don't want to crash. As again, for some people, maybe 60 will be the maximum. And if 70 will crash, then decrease by 10 megahertz and use the 60 as your stable if it's not going to crash it's better to use the stable frequencies all right now we're going to adjust the memory if i want you to go ahead and start with 100 megahertz increase at least and um, it's safe for any gtx 770 and will be stable um, okay as you can see memory frequencies in increase by 100 megahertz then i want you actually to increase by 150 and then test it in a uh, combustion as again you can see in GPU Z it's increased by 150 on the memory versus the default clock values let's go ahead and test it in a combustion and if you will see anything like uh, dots or um, lines in the, during the test in the combustion then it means that memory is unstable uh, those, those frequencies for memory is unstable and you, do, you need to back up by I would say by 20 megahertz when you overclock in the memory uh, video memory I suggest you on your video card I suggest you to stick with the 20 megahertz increase and decrease rule for the memory and 10 um, megahertz increase or decrease for the GPU or core clock okay I tested 170 if it's stable for 30 minutes combustion a couple games for 30 minutes and 3d mark and heaven stable then I will to move on by 20 more 190 tested and if it's stable I will increase more if not um, I will decrease by 20 megahertz and um, if uh, 210 will be unstable maybe I will keep it at 190 megahertz as my stable frequencies and if you're not going to see any dots and lines, that means it's stable. As again, use multiple uh, testing um, environments. And I will just go ahead and increase 210 and apply, test it and see how it will perform. As, as again, you need to and uh, just apply till you will find out your maximum frequency for some people 250 will be the maximum for some people will be just 200 megahertz maximum stable frequency for memory in my case 210 is the maximum stable frequency which is not bad and as you can see GPU is just showing some increases 
and if you keep your mind on bandwidth as well when you start it and, and then just scroll down the video and pixel fill rate you will see the increases and the, those values as well well thank you so much for watching that's pretty much how you safely overclock in the video card gtx um, 770 please thumbs up or like this video tutorial and subscribe for more to come also in the end of this video i will include some more tutorials where i'm going to compare against the gtx 760 and gtx 760 in sly mode so go ahead and click on it and learn some more um uh, information about the GTX 770, how how well it perform, as well as I will increase uh, include the G GTX 770 benchmarks, stock versus overclock, and um, as you can see over here, as well as it's going to be. Uh, just click on it, and if it's if you're watching it over the tablet, uh, then just go ahead and check the video description. I will put the uh, those videos in the video description as well, and also the unboxing will be included.